for being here. We're going to talk about the latest bogus nutritional epidemiological study that is scaring people out of time-restricted feeding and intermittent fasting. The title of today's uh, analysis that we're going to talk about is eight-hour time-restricted eating linked to a 91% higher risk of cardiovascular death, according to experts that presented this as a poster session at the American Heart Association's annual conference in Chicago yesterday. We're going to dive into these details. We are starting a little bit earlier than planned just because it's such a phenomenal day here. My room is about to get blown out with sunlight. I'm grateful that you are here. Let's dive into the latest of many related bogus nutritional epidemiological studies. Okay, so I printed this out. We're going to talk about uh, the study here. And many news outlets are reporting this, uh, talking about how fasting is going to cause you to drop dead of a heart attack. Intermittent fasting is going to raise your risk of dying from a cardiovascular related complication. Now, here's the reality of the situation. Okay. This abstract that was presented at a poster session, this is not even yet published, and it's making, uh, na some for some reason, this has become a national news story, right? We don't hear about you know, other health parameters such as even doing push-ups and how the association with increased push-up capacity can reduce your risk of dying from a heart attack over a 10-year period of time. You know, the media doesn't cover those stories, but they cover these stories to scare you out of fasting because they obviously have a lot of conflicts of interest with fast food companies and commercials. Anytime you watch the Super Bowl or any major newsworthy event, Carl's Jr., Jack in the Box, and all the junk food commercials promote it. But anyway, let's talk about this. This is a nutritional epidemiological study, my friends, the latest uh, of its kind uh, that I think is, again, very short-sighted in terms of the coverage, okay? We can't make any inferences from this study. Let me just zoom in here uh, so you can see what we're talking about. We're right on the American Heart Association's website. This is the abstract here. Now, what do we have here? We have 20,000 adults. This is not a randomized control trial. Just want to let you know. This is another nutritional epidemiological study that was conducted using data conducted between the years 2003, uh, 2003 and 2018. Who do you know who was practicing time-restricted fitting in 2003? No one. It wasn't even a word back in 2003. Okay. Well, let's just fast forward because the median uh, follow-up period uh, was eight years of this study that went on from 2003 to 2018. Okay. Intermittent fasting and time restricted feeding wasn't even part of people's for, uh, wasn't even a, a, a conversation uh, until like 2017, 2018. Okay, I mean, really, there was a small cultist following of fasting. People that heard of Jason Fung, maybe you subscribe to this channel. We interviewed Dr. Fung back in 2017. You know, he hadn't even published his book yet. I mean, what I'm trying to say here is, not many people were even considering fasting back then. Okay, uh, when this study was uh, being was collecting data, and this was the NHANES data uh, that that was being used, and so remember the NHANES data set is very limited in terms of what it can or can't uh, ask people. It's twenty four hour food frequency questionnaires. Hey, hey Sally, uh, how many bananas did you have yesterday? Hey Sally, you had eggs yesterday. Did you pour them out of the can uh, or did the, the the container, or did you? throw, uh, mix the eggs, you know, crack them yourselves and so on. So anyway, the point here is many people that were eating uh, in a short period of time back then in the early 2000s were simply eating, unha following unhealthy dietary uh, guidelines and practices. I mean, that's just, that's all we can ascertain from this is that, you know, in the early 2000s, fasting and time-restricted feeding were not even a, a top of mind for a lot of people. So we're, this data wasn't collected like in the last three years. This wasn't a randomized controlled trial because most of the randomized controlled trials that we have on intermittent fasting, on time-restricted feeding, reliably show that when people compress their feeding window, their blood pressure goes down, their waist circumference, belly fat goes down, their metabolic health parameters improve. And so now we have this epidemiological study that was conducted in the early 2000s saying that intermittent fasting increases your risk of, of having a heart attack, of dying from heart disease. Are you kidding me? This is, we're literally, the, this is all the media can talk about today is this study. And again, when you look at the details, data was collected in the early two, you know, starting from 2003 to 2018. And this is even acknowledged deeper down in the abstract that wasn't really uh, talked about. They, they even talk about the shortcomings of this study, you know, to say that, um, you know, you know, one of these details involves, you know, uh, nutrient quality, this, that, and the other thing. And 
but they say that time-restricted eating may have short-term benefits, but long-term adverse effects. You're telling me that something that in the short term reduces your blood pressure and reduces your waist circumference over the long haul is going to be bad for you? Are you kidding? So then the opposite must be true, that if something increases your blood pressure and increases your waist circumference, it is better for you? And Come on now, guys. This is, it's just crazy to me that these, these studies get so much airtime from the mainstream media. But the media doesn't even talk about all the things that you could be doing right now to actually reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease and dying from heart disease. We shared with you the study last week. I think I have it uh, saved right here. I get really excited about this uh, on muscular strength, reducing the risk of dying suddenly from a heart attack. You know, people that came and do 10 push-ups are at like five-fold greater odds of dying from a heart attack. Why isn't the media talking about this study? I mean, it's incredible that they pick up this story about a, a silly nutritional epidemiological study that's not even statistically powered to figure out whether or not fasting does or doesn't increase risk of cardiovascular disease over time. So I get fired up about this stuff because it's really disingenu disingenuous of the mainstream media to make a mountain out of a mountain of these different studies. And when they're not even set up to assess whether fasting or time-restricted feeding is uh, problematic from a long-term cardiovascular risk perspective, because again, the inclusion criteria, and these people were asked, given 24-hour dietary recalls a couple times. Hey, Sally, did you eat a cantaloupe yesterday or three grapes? Most people don't even know what they did yesterday, let alone what they ate or the window in which they ate the food. I mean, this is incredible. Uh, so, friends, don't be scared of fasting, particularly if, you, look, I don't even really have skin in the game. Okay, have I benefited from fasting? Yes. Do I always compress my feeding window? No. Have I seen fasting change blood parameters and clients that I work with and people? Absolutely. So I think it's really silly to scare people out of a lifestyle strategy or modality that can improve their health. You can just look in the comments here. People are commenting live right now. Again, if you're here live, hit that like button, friends. I'm grateful that you're here live. We're a little bit early today. Um, but yeah, this is, this is just crazy, this study. And again, people are accusing me of uh, people are accusing me of saying that fasting uh, gives heart attacks. I, that's not me saying that. That's the mainstream media uh, saying that. Uh, again, this is the study right here. Eight-hour time restricted eating linked to a ninety-one percent higher risk of, of cardiovascular death. I'm not saying fasting gives you a heart attack. I think fasting is quite amazing, particularly for people that have obesity, asthma, allergies. Many studies show that actually the earliest fasting studies were in overweight subjects that were asthmatics. And when they did alternate day fasting for 12 weeks, their asthma incidence cut down by more than half. Uh, and, and so the, the, we have these, you know, these studies now that are saying fasting is, is going to give you a heart attack and cause you to die. I mean, this is just absurd. So friends, before we part ways, I just want to say thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. If you're new to fasting, you may benefit from the Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. This is a great way to kickstart your fast. Take two to three capsules in the evening, especially if you suffer from food cravings and challenges. You can save with the code podcast at checkout. That's been a very popular natural way to kickstart your fast and to help to improve your body's levels of ketones and much more. Friends, that's it for today. We will post a phenomenal discussion tomorrow about exercise and cardiovascular health. As always, thanks for hitting that like button. Thank you for subscribing. I'll put links to this crazy uh, story right here. Here's the headline that is making national news for whatever reason, uh, scaring people out of fasting, which is absolutely absurd. So, uh, have an awesome rest of your day. Awesome evening. Appreciate you all tuning in. We'll catch you all on a future live episode next week.